I want to talk about the subject of independence. I think this is what many of us, <coughs> excuse me, are, are seeking. I'm going to use a couple of quotes from Friedrich Nietzsche in this video. So the first quote is, I think, very, very true. And that first quote says, independence is for the very few. It is a privilege for the strong. True independence is not easy. It's often a painful experience. Uh, kind of like the saying, it's lonely at the top. It's a similar concept. And I want to talk about a few areas where I think independence is earned and how those areas are difficult. So the first area is forging your own path. That's the first process of independence is choosing your own path and going on it. So following your beliefs in life and your decisions. And I think this is the hardest one because it's not about necessarily the hardest in taking the action, but it's the hardest in deciding what is really in your best interest. I mean, we as a society are told certain things are what we're supposed to do. And I think everyone likes to think, well, oh no, no, my decisions are unique. Well, to decide what's unique, we have to look at what the majority is first. You know, because still in the modern day, the, the majority of people go along the same route as they have been for the last years. Which is uh, marriage, children, family life, and a nine to five career. That is what the majority of people do still today. Maybe a little bit less today than before, but that is still the majority. And when you decide to uh, go a different path, it's not easy because you're separating yourself from what is the usual path. And people always question that. So another Nietzsche quote, no shepherd and one herd. Everyone wants the same. Everyone is the same. Whoever feels different goes willingly into the madhouse. Which explains a lot of people who are giving uh, guys going their own way a ton of shit. Because there's no threat from us. We're just saying, hey, you know, fuck it. We want to do our own thing. We're not interested in, in participating anymore. But people still have a problem with it. Which makes no fucking sense. Why would anyone even care? You would think that most people would be like, all right, cool, that's great, because then less competition for me in certain areas that these guys are not interested in participating anymore. Most people should be happy about it, but they're not. I, I still am not completely sure why, but I think that quote explains it. Whoever feels different goes willingly into the madhouse. So, uh, you know, guys like us must be fucking out of our mind, right? There must be some problem with us. People can't understand it because we're not wanting the same thing that everybody else wants. It must be some kind of crazy ulterior motive, right? But the, the, like I said, the difficult part is deciding what you want, but really figuring out what that is. Because, you know, we may say, I want this, but is that a true desire or is that something that was just pre-programmed in us? And I would start to say if, you start wanting something different than the majority, then you're in the first step. You're going the first direction, probably. You're, you're on your way. But you have to examine what is really best for you. What is it that you really want? And you're gonna have to think about this a lot to really get to the, the core issue, the core desires. And, and not just snap to what instantly pops in your head, which for most people is, Oh God, I, I really do just want a companion. I really do just want marriage. I really do just want kids. I really just want a secure career. Yeah, well, that's because that's what's been shoved in your head over time and time again. So you have to really examine that. And the moment you start living differently or thinking differently, then people are going to start having problems with it. It's going to become an issue to most people because if you don't want the same thing that they do, they don't know how to analyze you in any other way, then there's something wrong with you. Because we all want the same thing, right? Isn't that what the herd is supposed to want? We all want the same. If you don't, then there's a problem with you. 
So that's the first part of seeking independence is, de is deciding what you really want and acting on it despite the fact it may not be popular. Because it takes courage to do something that isn't popular because you're going to get a lot of shit for it. But it will be more rewarding in the long run if you can develop the ability to have independent desires, pursue them, and succeed at them. The second part of independence is being able to walk away from attachments. This is a huge one right here. Because if you think that um, you're independent, but you have this emotional attachment that you can't walk away from, well then I have some bad news for you. Because you're still a slave, you're a bitch to that emotional attachment. You know, a lot of guys say, well, you know, I could be married and, and be completely free. Maybe, but if you are, you, you can't care too much about your uh, wife to be completely free. Like, that's the reality. If you want to be detached from something so that you can walk away or be completely independent, then you can't care that much in the first place. If you really care uh, about your marriage and your children, you're really invested, then you're, you can't just walk away from that. Give me a fucking break. And I'm not saying that you should, but that is not being completely free. And even if you were emotionally free, you're still attached legally. So you're, you're not free on that level either, you know? But if you can, let's say you're, let's just use this as an example. Let's say you're dating someone. And if you break up, you can walk away unscathed without emotional turmoil. And you know what I mean when I say emotional turmoil. I'm talking about weeks or months of, oh God, I miss this person. Oh God, did I make a mistake? Oh man, I hope she's not seeing someone else. Oh man, you know, th that kind of fucking thinking. Most people cannot walk away from a relationship without guilt, shame, uh, dependency pains. And that is not uh, freedom because you are not free from that attachment. Now, if you date someone and you can walk away and you feel all right about it, immediately feel okay, then you're on the right path. But most people can't do that because they buy into more sociological programming of magic and love and blah, blah, fucking blah, right? So the first two parts of independence, being able to choose your own path uh, and separate yourself from the pack, being able to walk away from attachments without pain. That's another part of independence. And I would say the third part really ties into the first part, which is your ability to ignore other people. Ignore shame, guilt, or useless criticism that people place on you for your newfound choices. You know, and there's an Epictetus quote which I am uh, paraphrasing. I don't have it in front of me here. But he's talking about when people talk shit, basically, from, from a long time ago, ancient defense of shit talking, which is self deprecating humor. You know, so he would say, well, if that person said that about me, he obviously doesn't know that well about me because I have a lot of other faults. And he's basically talking about if someone says shit about you. He's just deflecting it through self-deprecating humor and not buying into it. And that's something you're going to have to learn how to do. Because if you find yourself arguing and wasting your time with other fucking people who are stuck in some other kind of uh, mindset in life, it's going to hinder your own progress forward. It's a waste of your fucking time. You know, so independence is, is challenging. It is hard. That's why so many people go the same fucking route. Because you don't have to think that much. You don't have to suffer that much. You can deflect your pain into comforts such as I have security with my job. Or such as I have a wife who will listen to me bitch because I can't, I'm not strong enough to maintain those emotions on my own. So I need a motherly figure in my life. And I need approval from the uh, general mass to feel like I'm doing the right thing in life. That's why most people can't be independent. You know, it's similar to, I've had a lot of people say to me, I could never be an entrepreneur like you. And I would say, why? And they'd say, well, I need to know I have a steady paycheck, eight to five, security, 
And that, you know, that's the perfect example for why most people cannot be independent. Because an entrepreneurial life is generally better. Because you have more freedom, your potential to make money is much higher, but there's risk involved. There's risk of discomfort, of not having security, of not having a schedule, of not having someone to hold your hand. Same thing with people who get married. You know, they want the same things, but the person who's single and dedicates himself to being single knows he doesn't have someone to hold his hand every time life is hard. Or the security, the illusion of security, of having someone always there. Similar concept. So sit down and evaluate. Do you want true independence? Can you deal without hand-holding? Can you deal without uh, defined security at all times? If you can, then maybe you are strong enough for true independence. All right, guys. I, you know, I wanted to make this video a lot more in depth, but I didn't, you know, make too many notes about what I was going to talk about. So I hope this video was helpful, and have a good day.